Good morning, Cardano community. My name is Ken Adams, and I hope to walk you through becoming a Cardano node active relay operator on a Raspberry Pi. Um, I made this happen yesterday, and I say I, I mean with the help of uh, YL and the Armada Alliance. Uh, we'll speak to them, we'll actually use their guides and tutorials in a few minutes. <laughs> if I can find the little scratching disc sound effect, I'm totally going to use it right here. Okay, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm on day three. I'm interjecting right in the beginning because I just edited this video, and I know it's a long video. The first six and a half minutes is the part that most people are going to watch and go, okay, it's time to time out. But uh, I do have to add a couple of caveats. One, this is my path. This is what Kenny Adams did to get from raw material to a pair of cardano node relays that are up and running it was successful um, i'm hoping that somebody else builds a better path but to my knowledge this is the only tutorial that is out there that gets you from point a to point b without stopping the second thing it's not grandpa it's grafana i get it um, so no, you can't have an ADA every time in the end of this video that I say, let's check out Grandpa. It's Grafana. That's how you pronounce it. I'm still learning. Uh, and yeah, and I'm still getting better at a lot of things. When we get into some other, um, uh, command prompt stuff, I could have zoomed in. I'm sorry about that. At the very end, you'll see that I zoomed in, uh, but I didn't, I don't have the patience to go re-record everything. I'm not getting paid for this. This is, this is a freebie for the community. I'm hoping that the two or three people that watch the whole thing, can just uh just go from top to bottom and, and learn and, and we get that better this isn't evergreen it's going to change things are going to improve uh, that's what we're supposed to do that's what we're here for but like i said it's the first and only one that i know of um there it is so that is not the first time or the last time you're going to hear so my my hope is that nobody makes a drinking game out of this video and takes a shot every time you hear the word so i apologize when i learn this is a great tool for me to learn how to speak better um oh there's an um don't do the ums don't do the so's you won't make it halfway through the video i promise uh, and that's my caveats not investment financial advice this isn't the final proven only method it's gonna get better um there we are okay appreciate it y'all have a great day see ya Let's cover a few of the basics, the things that I think you should already have in place, and that's gonna be reliable power, reliable internet, a Windows operating system. So if you're on Apple or Windows, I'm gonna be using Windows or Linux. If you're using Linux, you probably don't need my tutorial, but let's stick to the Apples and Windows people, Windows preferably, because that's what I'll be demonstrating. If you have a TV or even a spare um, computer monitor, either way, if it has an HDMI port, something separate from your actual computer system that you can um, plug your Raspberry Pi into. Um, and an open router port. You gotta make sure you have that. Um, if you don't have an open router port, you might have to get yourself a relay switch or something else, but uh, depending on what your internet service provider's router has, um, whether it's the backside of your Wi-Fi box, whatever it is, just check and make sure you have an open port before you get going on this. Um, there's a few items that you may not have laying around, and that's a spare keyboard, a spare mouse, um, and Cat6 Ethernet cable. Wherever you plug that in, your Raspberry Pi to the internet, you have to have enough um, cord to get from point A to point B. All right, let's take a quick look at the shopping list, the things that you're going to need to buy. I'm going to show you on Amazon uh, what they look like, and then we'll flip back to actually what was the order look. But we do need an hard drive, um, SSD hard drive. You need to have a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig. You need to have a micro HDMI. See how I enunciated micro? That might imply that I bought a mini at one point, but you need a micro HDMI cable. And you also need a SATA USB cable. So USB 3.0 to two and a half inch SATA 3 hard drive adapter. Um, so what do these look like? That is the HDMI to HDMI. You have to at some point in the transition um, connect your uh, Raspberry Pi to a computer screen, to that monitor, even to a television set. 
um, and plug that in so that you can go in and do a few of the commands to get it set up and then you'll be able to SSH into it. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, you'll also need your SSD and your SATA, USB to two and a half inch SATA. Um, your Raspberry Pi, 4.0, eight gig. Um, I have, I ended up getting one of the USB plug-in um, wireless keyboard mouse. Um, I just took it for my kids to put this one together. And then your power supply. Make sure that your uh, your kit includes the power supply. Um, and speaking of kits and setups for that, and how you're gonna and how you may or may not do it, if you're just thinking that you want to set up this relay, buy yourself a kit with a case. Which you see, I've actually got it hooked up to this. These are slots for the C4 Labs case that I have set up because my ambition is to go to a stake pool itself. Um, but in doing that, you have to set up a relay anyway. And if I just get to this point, I can train and educate myself on command line interface and doing what I'm doing right now. Um, so those are our pieces and parts and hopefully that's getting shipped to you right now. All right, let's see what this is gonna look like. Okay, so we have Cardano. We're gonna attach it to the home router. I'm gonna run that through the Wi-Fi, and we need our Ethernet cable to go from that Wi-Fi box. On mine, is uh, that's where my plug is. It is in the back of the Wi-Fi box, but it doesn't go through the Wi-Fi. Goes to my relay, this little relay box that's in the case, and that attaches, this is all Ethernet, into the Raspberry Pi node itself. We need to put power to it, I need to have a way to control it with a mouse, a keyboard, and a television or a monitor. Um, and those are all going in and connected. Our SSD card is going to go to the Raspberry Pi node as well. And that's a little fan that's attached to it to keep it cool. So that is how to get yourself a Raspberry Pi node. Okay, here's my caveat. I want to make sure I may or may not put the direct links to those four items that I put up there from Amazon in the description below. Um, but I have to let you know I am not an affiliate marketer. I considered it for a hot minute that maybe I can set myself up as that and do this. But for the percentage, listen, if you guys want to support me, support me by hitting the like button, subscribe to the channel. Um, those are the free ones. If you want to send a token, to, I'll put an address down there, an ADDR address, and you can you can support me that way if you'd like to. Um, but I, I don't think I'm going to get into the affiliate marketing game. I'll just put those links down in, in the description below. Um, if you don't want to feed the beast and continue buying from that, outsource it from a local shop. I know that um, Raspberry Pis, there's different... Um, different equipment manufacturers there's different vendors that are essentially local um, that can get the same equipment to you just as well so uh, depending on where you're at in the world mentally physically how you can get that um, those are just guidance links those are not affiliate market links so there's my oh let's just throw it in there this is not financial advice okay cool we got that covered thank you Okay, one last thing before you all drop out and switch to the next hype video because this is going to get really dry really quick now. Um, you want to make sure that if you're a Windows operator, you know how to get to the command line on your system. Um, it's actually fairly easy. Uh, at least it was for me. I went on Windows 10. Um, let's show you. I hit my transition button. You can Google Windows CMD and it'll teach you how to do it in your own system. But for me, I just hit the little search button. I type in CMD, and my command prompt shows up. That comes up, and now I actually have a command line prompt. This is something you will need to be able to do. It's going to make your life a lot easier um, to be able to cut and paste from tutorials once you SSH into your um, system and into your Raspberry Pi. 
Um, after this is set up, I won't have to continue plugging into that and dedicating a monitor. Um, I can just SSH and remote into it uh, once we get ported and set up. Okay, this is where it's going to start getting boring. I'll just sit here for a second and wait, let you guys click around, find your next links and go. Thank you. Appreciate your help. Appreciate you being here. All right, for the next three people that stayed on for this video, let's head over to the Armada Alliance website, armada-alliance.com, and we're off. I'm actually curious how the rest of this video is going to turn out if I get from entertainer mode to educator mode and see how fast that changes. Uh, we are now on the Armada Alliance website, and this is the site where you can dig in deep on the Alliance. 29 state pools, see where the live active state is. 1,600 delegators um, spread across 29 pools is pretty impressive. So we're going to go up to the top of the website and click on the search for anything and go straight down to run a Cardano node using a pre-built image. So that takes you to the guide, uh, the, the descriptive guide, open the full GitHub site, and that brings us right out to the GitHub page itself. Uh, the pi node img.gz, we want to upload that. Put that in a file in a location where we can have it. You can see that earlier this week I did that. That's the pi node dot img just just land it somewhere you're going to know where it's at and then come back to the page so we've already gone through our shopping list all the information here's your credits here's your download we're going to do our quick start guide this is where i get to be your guide because when you get to the github and you get to the alliance links um, there are a lot of uh, assumptions for people who are cli adept um, where we are not yet so um, you know if you ever heard the phrase RTFQ or RTFI um, read the instructions read the question so if we open up our full guide the first line right here is um, important once we get to it drop down and if we go straight to the quick start it's going to say quickly bootstrap a synced and configured node in an hour. So let's see if we can do it in an hour. Uh, but there's information and details. So step one is download and flash the RPI or the par, PI node IMG. Now it jumps right to SSH into the server. So for you and me, that's not that's not really helpful. Um, except that I can go back through the PI and figure out what that meant. Um, first I need to sync and configure that flash drive. So let's do that. Let's go back to the Cardano node and in the, um, download and flash section, there's a real nice link to the Raspberry Pi website. I'm assuming you have not already, um, set up the Raspberry Pi imager on your computer. You'll need to do this. Um, you have a Raspberry Pi now. You need to be able to flash different operating systems onto it to make it run. So um, jump into here, 45 second video. There's instructions, Windows, Mac, Ubuntu. Um, although if you're on Ubuntu, you probably don't need this level of <laughs> tutorial guide, but we'll get there. Um, but I, I have mine up for Windows. Um, once it's in the system, I just hit that search button and it's in my recents, but if I just type in RPI, it'll come up. I'll hit yes and it pops up so let's go back to our guide and see what we can do on the download and flash guide and we start following these instructions we're going to insert the target drive in your ssd uh, we're going to choose operating system um, choose our sd then choose write and that's how you actually flash and sync this system so let's run back over to our imager we're going to choose our operating system now let's use custom because we put that on there our pi node img.gz is the one we're looking for we hit open we choose our storage device now i've already got mine plugged in up top and that's the drive and we hit right all existing data is going to get wiped yep we want to do that 
And now, this is where you twiddle your thumbs. This is where you wait. This is where you go check on your kids if they just woke up. Maybe feed them. Um, we'll be back. All right, we are back, and the pynode.img.gz has been written. We can continue and get it out of there. Oh, make sure you actually eject your disk. You don't just pull it out. And we're off. So boot and configure, insert the SSD into one of the blue USB 3 ports, then insert the HDMI, the keyboard, the mouse, the ethernet, and the power supply. So let's do that. And our Raspberry Pi 4 sits here. We're gonna take our one foot ethernet cable because in that C4 case, there's a relay box inside of there. Um, I have the jelly comb for my mouse and keyboard. That's just in one of the generic ports. My 3.0 port is going to be my SATA cable for my SSD. Um, my power supply is disconnected. Leave that hang and we'll plug that into our tray. Now that's in the Raspberry Pi. And your micro HDMI plugs in. So let's see what that actually looks like. There's that. Okay. The last thing that I connected up there was actually the fan. Inside that C4 Labs case, there's a little fan. So connect that to two of the um, relays on there. And now we're going to plug it in. So if you're new to all of this, like I am, that looks like a like wizardry in action, like some kind of melted alchemy. I don't know. <laughs> At some point, it's going to stop um, whirring and spinning and doing its thing. Okay, we've got to the point where our login is set up. Uh, let's take a look back at the Pi Node Quick Start. Um, default credentials, Ada, Lovelace, that's there. So transition back. This one is set up as Ada, password is Lovelace. Required to change our password, what's our current password? Lovelace. And our new password. Verified. Ta-da, we are in. Okay, so now that we are in, we are logged in and we have our, our own password set up. Now we're on step two. We need to SSH into the server. So what does SSH mean to us? If you think about it this way, when you're on your computer and you call IT, IT is going to remote into your computer system by whatever means they have it. Maybe you have to give them the IP address, maybe you have to give them a desktop number, depends on if you're in a big corporation, in a small unit, if you're calling, a, you know, like one of the box stores that can help you out. Um, they're going to remote into your system. They need to know what your address is. So that's your main public IP address. Um, we need to figure out what that is. That's up here. C-U-R-L space ifconfig.me write it down there's a quiz later um, 
when you click on or when you type that out, um, you'll, you'll get your actual public IP address. You also need to know what your Raspberry Pi's address is. That's a, it has its own address that's on the other side of that. Essentially, the firewall front address, this is the second floor guest bedroom. It's here. That's, that's the actual dot dot address. So let's transition over and take a look at what that looks like. Um, on the screen now, we see that I have hit the, I use the command clear. That's another uh, command line that's very nice when you type that it clears off all the mess of everything that was on there um, when you type in ifconfig.eto that one will give you your raspberry pi's address because you're on that system and that is the um, address of that pi in that machine if i hit enter right now it'll pop it up and display it but guess what that's my address i'm going to keep that C U R L space I F C O N F I G dot M E. That's my front door address. That's to my router at my machine at my house. And that if I hit enter right now, it'll display that. Um, and you'll see what your IP address is. Go ahead and do that for yourself. Write those numbers down. And that's pretty much the last time we're going to need to be on the machine um, at all, at least using that monitor and that screen because we are now going to be able to ssh into our node so let's go back over to our desktop we're going to open up our command prompt if i using my windows system right click and it will say copied go back to your command prompt and as we were left click now i'm going to right click and SSH space ADA, it's a nice way to copy all the uh, code since you're on the same system. We're going to backspace through here. And I'm going to jump to my screen and do a little typing. Um, so. Now, the first time you do this, it's going to say the authenticity of host with your IP address can't be established. The key fingerprint, uh, are you sure you want to continue connecting? So you know the information, you're verifying this, you're going to say yes and enter. Please type yes or no, okay? Thank you. There's my yes. Now it's asking for my password. So now I need to give it my password that we set up earlier. documentation so we I am there I'm going to hit clear on that I'll bring my screen up over here now so you can see that it changed the color itself also so I actually have Ada at Ubuntu with the dollar sign and we are live so I am remoted in now and that's pretty awesome so I have this <laughs> I we are done with step two all right, let's start having some fun. So I just rearranged my windows so that we can see it a little bit better, I think, I hope. We're gonna enter the Pi Pool folder. So remember, left click, right click, enter. So what we just did was we changed directory to home ADA Pi Pool. So now you can see hopefully that, that Pi Pool is on there. And we're going to download the database snapshot. So instead of typing this whole thing out, right, left click to copy it, right click to get the whole thing in there. Enter. Now. You have time to do some cooking and some cleaning. Let's roll back up and it does show. We'll take about 15 minutes to download the chain, another 45 to sync the tip. Um, won't be able to do much until your node is synced to the tip of the blockchain. It can take anywhere from five to 50 minutes to sync a reboot, depending on how the node was shut down or restarted. So check if progress is running with a HTOP. If it is, use GLive View SH or go for a walk. 
it'll sink and the socket will be created. It's the best way to just leave, or it is just best to leave it running. So let's take a quick preview while we're waiting. We know that um, we need to enable and start the Cardano service. So um, we're gonna wait for wget to finish downloading the chain before starting the Cardano service. While we're waiting for Ubuntu by entering the server from another terminal, you can do an, uh, a sudo apt update and a sudo apt upgrade. Uh, then we're gonna start playing with steps um, five which is enabling the service enabling the monitoring um, and then we're verified by typing in status and then we can do glive we're, we're really step by step close it's just going to take time for this machine to do its job so sign out for a few minutes and i'm going to start editing this video all right popping in for a second to point out the fact that we are done with the wget our files are on there. So let's do a quick clear. Nope, let's make sure we're in the prompt and then type clear. That just cleans the screen up. Now, we're going to do a, apt, a sudo apt apt upgrade. Um, sudo, you'll have to look that one up too, but that is like, uh, god mode i think essentially <laughs> best way to say that because it talks to everything we are remoted in to our system we're not directly plugged in anymore so if you need to do something to your system um, that sudo command is there so we come back here and hit copy now go back to our command prompt sudo apt update and it's going to ask for our password so whenever there's a delay in there especially when you go to sudo it's wanting your password to make sure that you're not just remoted in and start bouncing around on the main system so Try again. There it is. Now what this is doing is this updating and upgrading. This is, uh, I've been told, something that needs to be done often. Uh, whenever you're actually offline, you want to take that note and, and do an update and do an upgrade. So, Done. 44 packages can be upgraded and it is done. So we're there. That didn't take long. Now. Okay. All right. Now we're going to work down to, we're going to finish step five, which was enable and start the Cardano service. So at this point here, we'll copy this and enable it and start it. Hit enter. It started. We're going to start enable and start our monitoring service. That's step six here. That's copied. Now it's pasted. We're waiting. So it is enabled. Now we're going to start it by hitting enter. It started. Now, do we know that our monitoring is started and do we know that our um, service is started? That's where we're going to confirm that they are running. So if I copy my line seven, we can see right here that it is active. I can scroll up and see it is active. So back to my command line. So. I don't have to type clear anymore. I can just kind of tab up to get to clear and run. Okay, so as of right now, Cardano service is running, it's monitoring, and it's on. At this moment, we actually have, it's probably still spooling up and starting, and I know that from at least a day's worth of experience. <laughs> so, um, G Live View. Dot sh so we need to change our directory to um, our node home scripts which we can type it out or copy it 
and we pasted it. So what we did was CD space dollar sign node underscore home slash scripts. So we added that directory. So now you can see that it you might be able to see it as in blue over black. Sorry. And then dot glive view sh. We know we want that. We're going to hit enter and glive. So the static content from ENV does not match with Guild Operator's repository. Do you want to download, update the file? ENV update successfully applied. Press any key to proceed. If you guys can find the any key, let me know where that's at. <laughs> All right, so let's give that last command a whirl dot g live okay now this screen shows that our status is starting hmm. okay so I just came back from a little work around on my end because I used the entire program and cut and pasted that pre-programmed um, file so knowing that you guys are setting up your first cardano node relay um, you're great with cut and paste because i did it just yesterday and now i have a second relay in the system um, one line of code had to change from the port which is set up right now as port 3003 um, that's the first one that's the one i did last night today um, I just changed my port number so I had to work through that detail and that's outside of the scope here since you're setting up your first one so let's step back on the screen and take a quick look and see from our scripts file if we have cardano dash service space start status and stop so when you start the service that runs it you hit you go to status Cardano dash service under or space status allows you to see if it's running and if it's active or not. You can turn it off by doing Cardano dash service space stop. Once that's stopped and it's out of the way, then you know that you can make your changes. Then you got to start it back up and then check your status and then move forward. So always running that from the scripts file. Also, your GLive view. So let's head over to our screen. And we can just kind of cut and paste this so I know that I get on my screen. I'm going to run up and let's just check and see what our status is currently. So right there we see Cardano service status. If I click on that button, it's going to ask me for my password because it's been a minute. Now, right there it shows me that it's active and running. Fantastic. Uh, control C to close out of that and clear it. Now, next trick is G Live View. So, dot forward slash G Live View dot sh. Hit enter there. This is where we get into our G Live View and we can see what our actual status is and we can work from our system. So, um, started this up oh 20 minutes ago. It's still starting. Uh, new system, but that's kind of where that note shows that we have a period of time um, that we have to go through it. I will get distracted if my kids are running around, and that's fine by me. Hi, Wyatt. Hey, I'm doing a tutorial. Can you uh, give me a minute? Yeah, I'll do it. Thanks, buddy. Can I have a snack? Yep. Okay, cool. Now, I think we are ready to go into Grandpa and check this out. So um, I was advised well to always quit G Live View. If I'm not actually in it, using it, doing it, then I'll quit that. Now, I'm on my service and my setup. This is outside of the main page and I'm going to open up my Grandpa View. If I open up my first Grandpa View, you guys may recognize this from a Twitter post I put out. Um, when I was a little bit proud yesterday, and, and I think deservedly so. But there's my G Live, my uh, Grandpa view that I'm using right now and learning from and understanding. This is when I say you can get under the hood and start learning what's going on. Um, I have eight, I have six peers connected, 
Um, they're, I have, uh, I've been running for 19 hours since yesterday. I've got a little bit of sleep. Daniel, I think you told me I, that's optional. Um, but this is how I get to see what's going on and I can be an active participant in decentralization because this relay is actually trans like doing stuff with transactions and processing. So, um, it, it is it's exciting so i'm happy now what we need to do is with the new relay so we open up a new tab and because i'm not 100 percent sure everything's going to be what we want it to be i'm going to pull that tab off camera and we can really just leave that because that looks cool to see in the background now oh no we don't <laughs> sorry we need to go back to our information and what we're going after, which is to go to Grandpa, enter your node's IPv4 address into your browser. Um, so go to your browser. Go and actually type in your Cardano Raspberry Pi's actual one. So that's going to be... I can promise you that uh, the relays that I'm building right now are just going to be relays uh, when it comes time to create my stake pool. My stake pool will be um, not recorded. I won't be doing that in that manner. Um, I'll have a cold storage. I'll have a cold storage um, pie, and I'll also have my block producer will all be off of the camera. Okay. So I just typed in my IP address for my Raspberry Pi. It's giving me an immediate message. Your connection is not private. We know that. What we're doing is setting up. I know that I'm in my own network. So I'm going to go to advanced. And I'm going to proceed to that. And it's saying it's giving me the warning. It's saying that it's unsafe. That brings me to Grandpa. I'm going to enter my email or my username. I'm going to enter my password. Oh, which, by the way, is as identified right here is admin admin. Now it's asking me for my new password. Okay, now I'm in Grandpa. I'm logged in. I have my new password for this. I click that button. I got a pie. That's cool. So what does this mean? What's going on with it? Um, everything. It's working. It's doing its job. It's online. Now there's no transactions process. We're not connected to peers yet. This is still a, a down-ish system because, let me minimize that. We can go out to GLive. We'll, and check the status this is checking it directly from the um, machine itself or the computer itself watching from grandpa so we're still starting it's been a little while so i might think what i'm going to do oh you know what now it's time to get uh i need to let my internet router in my house know that I want this to communicate with the world. That's where we get into the next level stuff. So, ready for a break? Okay. 
All right, we're not completely back from lunch yet, but as you can see, we are sinking at 99.1%. It just takes time. We're getting there. Let's take a quick peek at our grandpa. Maybe. Boop. That's our actual new, holy cow, CPU usage off the charts, RAM off the charts. Um, <clears throat> we'll need to fix that. We know how to, I do believe I'll know how to do that and we'll get it. But let's let it get synced first. Uh, so a few more minutes and we'll get back at it. Okay, so while we're waiting for our final um, syncing, we're going to take care of port forwarding. So in port forwarding, this is something that you have to do to make sure that your relay talks to the world through your um, your system so this is one where you're going to have to get into your own system and figure out through your service provider how to do it sometimes it's tricky it's different this is one where you're, you got to take your own initiative to find it but once you get there and you have your customer service name you're going to give your port a name that you recognize so i'm going to call this relay two um tcp udp this uh service other my external host is not needed my internal host is what's needed and this is where i'm going to put my um, ip address my external port if you go to glive view and you look up in the middle it says port and there's a four digit number if you use this whole tutorial from top to bottom and nothing has changed from that day till today then uh, it should be 3003. Um, I, like I mentioned, I had to change mine, so mine's 3002 in this case. Um, so here I'm gonna roll quit just to get that out of the way because I don't need it there anymore. My external port is 3002. 3002. And then my host. Actually, check this out, let's try this. Let's bring the grandpa up and running. I have no idea if this is going to work fast or slow or what, but as soon as I add and enable data successfully saved, and now looking through my screen, I have a external internal port. I have my new host is there. So we'll check it out. We'll find out what the, what the story is. As far as I know and as far as I can tell, <laughs> My port forwarding is complete, and I didn't even have to call an IT. Okay, it is time to resolve our RAM usage. It should not be in the 96%, so we got to do a couple um, changes. Go back over to the Armada Alliance site um, under Environment Setup, Raspi Node, Environment Setup. And our code sits here for us. So under system D unit files, um, we're going to check this. So we're going to paste that dude in there. And that brings up our, our information. So see where it says Cardano, node, run, RTS, N4, RTS. Um, what it should look like is this line 11. So it's not easy using this terminal on Windows to do this. Um, been through this before. So what we're going to do is <laughs> I'm going to set my mouse way over to the side now because I'm in this and it is not. It's very habit forming to get in and start clicking away. But I need to drop back and just copy and paste this line of text. So Cardano dash node space. Okay, when you're inside one of your files, you exit with a control X, and then you say yes with a yes, and then it's asking you to write the file, you hit enter, and now it's saved. And you can see that we are inactive. That's right here. Control C, and then we're gonna do Cardano service start. Right. 
There's my start is starting, it is running. So we're gonna hit pause now and we'll let it fire back up. All right, let's see how it worked out. We gave it a minute to boil. G Live View. Checking for script. Shows that we are online, we are synced. Everything's looking good from that point of view. Now let's look at it from Grandpa. Ooh, 45% RAM usage, that's pretty sexy. Cool. All right, we're gonna do um, one more step before we start connecting anybody else's uh, relay, act as an actual relay, and we wanna clean out our um, database files. So we're gonna turn our, our service off. We're gonna stop it. We're gonna change directory back to the root, and then we're going to I shouldn't say that we're changing directory back one line to pi pools then we're going to touch db clean so that's touch space db forward slash clean um so let's do that and that may not it will help us out a little bit at least to get stuff out of the way that doesn't need to be there so we're going to cardano service stop now it's out. Now we're going to find ourselves a Cardano service status. Failed. AKA stopped. Okay. Control C to clear that. We're going to do our CD space dot dot. Takes us back one level or to pi pool. Do touch. Clean. Let's say I have RPI node relay two. I will have an SSD card there. That goes in. When I'm setting it up, all of this is going to get disconnected. And then I can rerun. my monitor I'll have to find another outlet and then run power there and put the little fan to the Raspberry Pi node 2 now once my second node is hooked up I can disconnect that I can continue watching TV the way I would watch TV elsewise but I got to connect it up to the relay I missed that one that Second one goes into the same box. And this is going to be my port assignment. Is here. I have an IP address here. That's my public IP address. And then each one of these nodes have an IP address. So those are the bits of important information for that. So this one's connected, that one's connected, and those both go out. How do I see these without that? That is where my relay is set in. And then even from the Wi-Fi, um, I can just go from my laptop. I can do it with Wi-Fi to here. And those are talking because on my home relay my home network this is talking back to here or if I'm on my computer off-site and I'm connected to the internet or I'm connected to Wi-Fi to somebody's router or hotspot or something like that um, that goes out into the ether worlds and then bounces through my home router and then talks in so speaking of that and understanding this piece of it, let's get those out of the way. 99% of the time it's going to be running just like this with a, a node here, relay one, relay two, are all talking in and working with the router. So these are my outs because this is going out, but my ins when we go over to Grandpa and when we go to our live view to see what our ins and our outs are, if you have another 
SPO relay that's out there in the world and they're talking through the Cardano network and I gave them my public IP address with the port identifier that relay is going through and talking back that's why that's where my second N is I hope I didn't go too far with that but uh, that's what I know I don't know a lot yet but I do know that okay it's getting to be the afternoon now um, the relay that we set up eight hours ago has been running has been going smooth we can see where that's all at so now um, still not doing any trans transactions because we haven't set any uh, relays up so what you would need to make this happen is to find somebody who is running a cardano node and they want to share with you their information so among the armada alliance there's actually a json file that has um, everybody's topo set up um, their topology set up and i have that information from uh, wcat um, otg pool and so we're going to set up a relay to his i asked him if he was okay with that and he said yes so here's what we need to do i need to go into cardano service space stop stop to cardano service we're going to change directory to our node home and files and then we're going to do a nano space mainnet topology dot json it's going to open up the file that exists where it's at and then i can use the information and data that um, is provided add it in there and this is where I have to start doing some coding um, that said be careful with what you're typing so let's go ahead and hit minimize there we're still linked in right now I'm sure the first executable command because it's been a break and uh, it's gonna be a minute so we are going to stop our Cardano service let's just check our status real quick so um, Cardano service status enter Asking for my password. Active and running. Now we already knew that because we saw it um, live in live in action on Grandpa, but I can't imagine it hurts to check. So Control C to get out of that, and now we're gonna do Cardano service stop. Cardano service stop. and we'll verify by hitting status and we'll see that our active is inactive uh, that is right here about the third line down control c out clear all right let's start fresh so we know cardano service is not running now and it's there um, because i'm just running a relay and i'm i'm still learning and doing this the fact that i'm tied into others it does it isn't critical for that point but if I am in a topology with a number of people um, I may want to check with them before I shut this down so that they know hey I'm gonna be shutting my node down so I can update it so I can get rid of those uh, um, you know clear out that uh, any files do just any updates so make sure that as you have multiple relays or you're a part of a topology that just by some random chance all of your relays aren't getting updated at the same time so we're going to change our directory to the node. So we do cd space and that takes us out to pools files. Now we're going to do it. We're going to check what our topology is. So if you're with me so far and you are still new to this there's a few other commands i'm just going to show it to you real quick so ls lists and you can see what files those are it lists it out in your files um, just if you want to double check the spelling or where that's at so we're looking for mainnet topo json so we're going to do nano 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 it's probably the first time that joke has ever been told Now, if I get close to typing it out all the way and I hit tab, there's two mainnet dashes plus some. So if I'm going to mainnet topo, I can hit um, tab and that auto fills that. So neat little trick. I'm learning it. I'm practicing it so that I retain it. But that is what we're going to do right now. Hit enter. Now, 
we have our relays new Cardano mainnet IOHK.io, and that's in port 301, and the valency is 2. Now that is all key information because that, that is why I'm talking to IOHK, but I'm not doing transactions. That's the one that's the one service that valency is two. So just to see what that looks like, let's run back real quick. And if I can find it, which probably can. Grandpa. My connected peers. Oh, <laughs> it's showing zero because now there are zero because we stopped our service. But if you remember that said two, those two valencies were both relays that were new cardano mainnet iohk.io so it was talking out to those locations but that's all there is now what i have to do is add i'm going to add it as a relay so this is now going to be a relay for another block producing um cardano thing so let's see how well i remember information from last night oh yeah this is where you really got to just throw it out the window i'm gonna set it out of the way as long as I'm in my screen that's highlighted, but once you move this cursor around, this is like a giant grid, and we need to add lines. So I'm going to put a comma, hit enter, that opens up another line, and you can have a space here, and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. I'm gonna put that little squiggle, we're, we're creating another bracket. We want to mirror what's already above, so we're not creating anything new. We're just taking this out to the same line. So this is going to be parenthesis ADDR, parenthesis colon, space, parenthesis. Now, this is where if somebody provides you a um, IP address, or if you're gonna give your IP address to somebody, if they wanna bounce off of yours, we do this. So. OTG. Yeah. Now, one thing that I'm going to do, and you won't really see it because I'm using a post it note. Is to ensure that you are, your lines are con you have continuity in your lines straight down that there is no gaps, no spaces, no extra anywheres. I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna space this out. Now I need the port. Ready for another dad joke? Here it comes. This is in port tent. So, IOH case is three oh oh one. We remember that the file that you all created, um, the first one I did yesterday, we were in port 3003, but you need to find out um, the port that we're looking at here is uh, 6002, comma. Oh, I missed the comma. You guys see that? At the end of the parenthesis, gotta have that comma. I am not astute enough to tell you why, but you do. So the port that's provided is there. Now this one, the valency in this case is going to be just one because there's only one on this one. Valency. Space one. Now there's no comma at this one because that's the end of what's being captured. And squiggle dude. And I added the comma in this line. If you recall, it wasn't there before. Now we're all set. Now OTG's relay two is also relaying for me. So I'm going to control. All your instructions are down there on the bottom. I, I moved my mouse, I can't even find it. So I have to use my eyes and look. Down on the bottom, it's con that little up angle, a chevron up is going to be a control button with an X. So control X is exit. Modify save buffer is giving me the option for yes. I want to save that. Save it to my mainnet topology JSON file. Hit enter. Ta-da! It's done. So now it's in there. That's where we added our relays. We hit the um, Chevron up X and yes. Now we get to start our service. Because our service was turned off, now we're going to turn the service back on.
start. And uh, I'm going to fast forward a little bit to just check my status. It's running. Control C to get out of that. Now it just, just started. Where's my mouse? There it is. Okay, now we go back to mouse mode. Because it just started, let's get out to here. And we can see that our CPU usage has just jumped up which is expected, right? Because our, we're using a computer. The RAM's not there yet because we don't have it. Um, let's peek back. And I know that it's not quite time yet, but we're gonna, let's G live. Now I'm gonna show you something where I messed up quite a few times. If I do G live right now, pop quiz, what's the problem? It's not gonna work, why? Because we're still in the files directory. I need to get back over to the Starts with an S file. Let me start typing it. I'll probably figure it out. But I'm going to do CD space dot dot. That's changing directory back one. Now I'm going to do CD. Wait, I can't remember. If I can't remember, I can do LS. And that's telling me that there's a directory for DB, files, logs, and scripts. There's the S word. That's a good S word, though. Listen, I figure there's probably two or three of you still watching at this point, so I can get away with the whatever jokes I want. Now we are in scripts. Does that work or no? Okay. So now, now we can do our little G Live view. Boop. It should still say starting, but since it, remember when it took a long time to do it that first time? It takes a long time the first time. Now it just needs to get riled back up. So it's starting. It's going to take a few minutes. And what we should see once it's started and once it's online, if this has a problem, if there's an issue with it, uh, maybe it takes five or ten minutes and then we need to rehash, redo it. Um, we can go back a few steps and um, do something to DS. I got notes. I'll have to figure it out. <laughs> this is the fun part. Uh-oh, looks like we are synced. So that's synced. I have three outs and zero ins. That means something's happening. Let's check it out over on Grandpa. Let's give it a second. Wait for it. So remember, Grandpa is a little bit delayed. It's, it's, uh, it's pulling details and data from after the fact. Let's see if we can look at them at the same time. <gasps> oh my God, there it is. So we are online. I now have three set up that are outbound. If I want to offer mine to somebody else, um, Maybe he's online and I can reach it back out to him and give him my information. The information you're going to need to share with anybody else to have to create a topo that matches is going to be your IP address. That would be your public IP address and the port that you assigned when we did that port assignment. Um, you give those two bits of information and then your relay can work off of in that sense. So, all right, so we connected successfully to OTG pools relay. And I reached out to OTG, and um, he he reached out to mine. I gave him my public IP address as well as the correct port identifier and um, set his up for mine. So now we can see that I am receiving transactions. We still, ha we still have the three connected peers. Um, that was the two that were in the system as well as um, his. When we look at... Um, G Live, we can see that I have three ins and or three outs and one in. Uh, that one in is OTGs. And if we are on this screen now and I hit P for peer analysis, it updates it and it shows my three outs and my one in. So pretty cool that we are now set up in that way. And fun fact the relay that we're connected to out there is uh, all working off of Starlink. So they're kind of like star transactions. So pretty cool. All right, there it is. Now I know, now we know 
we're online. I have a working second working relay. Um, I've connected to at least one peer in both directions and we know that it's working and this is now a node and we can see since this has been running for two days I can um, modify I'm going to say grandpa one more time. Um, hopefully I remember to put the bonus features in the beginning. But here you go to one hour. You can look at it for the last 12 hours. You can make your modifications and see what activity it is out there. So that is that. We're backed out. Okay. I'm just going to wrap it up right here. We have, um, we are on ssh into our relay through a Windows command prompt. Uh, we do not want to leave that control on there. It'll ask for passwords and all that, but when we leave this, we hit exit, E-X-I-T, exit. That logs out of the connection, and that's done. So that's out of the way. Now I don't have a, a direct line of communication to that Raspberry Pi. It's just doing its thing. If I watch it, right here we can see where our ram usage is there our cpu is up um, i'm going to probably check in on this a little later on we should see some tx's processed here in a little bit and we are golden this is where it gets exciting because now you know um, you're you're actively taking part in decentralizing cardano it's really cool i'm really happy to to have figured out how to do this i can't express my gratitude enough whale um spending a lot of time with me wayne um all you guys everybody that's on that armada alliance team that is a very active telegram group um you guys have done nothing but help out and offer insight and offer information and put things out there so i'm starting to really get a handle on what blockchain technology is and how to take part in that and how to be um in this immutable ledger and help prove those um pieces now i know i have i officially have two relays up and running now it's going to be time for me to start um exploring getting my hands wet and really figuring this out my next step obviously is going to be create a block producer um, and that's a whole other level of information but the purpose of this tutorial was to get you from having raw materials having a raspberry pi having the the right cables and having a ssd set up and ready to go put those together attach it to your system and you can have that sitting off to the side and actually have an active relay on the cardano node so i thank you for your time i, I really really do um yeah that's about it guys gals we're we're doing it we are participating we are being decentralized I'm getting educated. I hope that this helps you step by step. Um, my next step is going to be to outline everything that's, that I've done. Because as you saw, I went through their GitHub and I pulled different pieces from different places to get to this point. And maybe I can help submit um, a GitHub pull request. I could just hand them a, a Word document that says, here's the steps that I took. I don't know, that's, that's, that's continued learning. So. Uh, here we go. I am all set and this is awesome. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you.